Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 91, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and I will do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one's called Flat Earth Questions. Imagine that. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. I have just started researching the Flat Earth Theory, which I find fascinating. I have come to realize that we are all living a lie, that the lives we live, something just doesn't feel right, especially after researching Dr. Stephen Greer's work. I wanted to ask you some questions if I may. Do you have any theories? What is beyond the barrier? Uh, and usually I've got to answer these in kind of the order because people, they can't just ask one question. It's like question, 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 question. So, uh, yes, do, do I believe there's, do I believe there's something beyond the barrier? Yes. I believe it is an unlimited universe, the exact opposite of this world. This world is based on 99% pure conflict, like 99% pure anything. Uh, there's 1% bliss. The rest is just pure conflict. So I think outside of here is a mirror image of that where it's 99% bliss. Uh, how do the seasons work on a flat earth? It, I don't have a visual for you, uh, only that, well, I actually do have a visual. The, the, I could use the old one where it's kind of like a needle on a record player. If you're old enough to remember a record player, how the, as the record keeps going, the needle moves in. And if you reverse that, the, move, the needle will move out. So the sun and the moon are on slightly different tracks. Heck, they might even be on slightly different elevations. Who knows? Uh, and I do believe that we are busted and have had contact with aliens for a very long time. Greer's work proves that. So how did they break through the barrier to visit us? Who says these aliens are from another planet? Uh, science fiction, movies, television. That's what tells you. I, I'm not saying that there's not things up there. I've watched them with night vision many times. There's all sorts of things crawling around up there. Uh, but do I think they're us? No, I do not. Very, very few things would be us. But do I think they're from Mars and Jupiter and Saturn? No, I do not. Uh, and so I think they're, so again, one of two options there. Are they inside, trapped inside the building with us? Or are they allowed to pass through and come in and out and go as they please? It's hard to say. Maybe some can, maybe some can't. It co comes down to the hierarchy. Uh, many thanks in advance and thank you for your time, Dave Freeman. Very welcome, Dave. This one's called Flatline Horizon. Mark, here's a great video for you. The producers didn't even know what they were. They were proving the straight horizon. Ha ha. And that's a, it's a real estate ad for 26 Mc, Macau, McNally Drive, Sunshine Beach. McAnally Drive. Wow. I've never, M-C-A-N-A-L-L-Y Drive, Sun, Sunshine Beach. Marketed by Tom Offerman Real Estate. Uh, yes. All right. Check it out if you get a chance. And that was from, uh, who said that? Florian. Thank you, Florian. This one's called, Why Do They Need an Airplane If They Have Satellites? Hello, Mark. Since I am sharing this from a government work email, please do not say my name or email address. <laughs> Okay, first off, it, and I'm skeptical right off the bat here, uh, I'm looking at his email address and it's just a Gmail account. So, and I won't mention his name, but it's like, come on. Uh, I have copied and pasted an email from my government agency. They say in his email, okay, went from they to his, is going badly right now, that they will not clearly know about the storm that is about to hit Texas coast until they send out an army reconnaissance plane. My question, if they have satellites, why do they need the plane? Could not the advanced satellites take in all the information that they need? Uh, you know, I'm just going to read this short email that he sent. And it, it was, it's badly pasted and there's no, there's no email attached to it. Uh, good, it says, good afternoon, nobody. Uh, the percentage for development has now increased to 70%, but there is still minimal information on which exact direction it will travel. Essentially, all on the Texas and Louisiana coast need to be monitoring. Terrible sentence structure. I think it's fake. Uh, one key bit of information is an Army reconnaissance flight is scheduled for tomorrow, and I believe that will give us better intel on this disturbance. Projections are still showing it will become a, this is highlighted, become a depression by Thursday evening, created a significant rain event on the Texas coast, even if it does not develop into a tropical storm. I will update as soon as I have any new relative information. I, I don't even know how to respond to that. It's, look, guys, send me, eh, doesn't matter. It's fine. 
This one's called F-E-O-I-C-S for slideshow. Hello, Mark. I thought I would send you a couple of pics that I hope you can use in your slideshow. If there is a debunk for these, please let me know. Otherwise, you are welcome to post them anywhere you wish. Pics are attached. Hope they go through okay. Thanks for all you do, and God bless you. Flat and enclosed is where it's at. That's from Dennis Herring. Cool. I will check out those slides. This one's called Flat Earth License Plate Frame. Hi, Mark. It's Flat Earth Frank. Thanks, man, for all your hard work. God bless. P.S. I have one in the back, too. Stay flat. And yeah, you've probably seen this in the, the license, Flat Earth License Plate compilation I put in there. It's one of the few non... I put it in... Every once in a while, if it's License Plate Frame, I don't mind. You can send that to me. So he made up a, a custom frame that says NASA lies up above and then Earth is flat. And it's for a California license plate. And it is now in the slideshow. So if you guys want to send something, you don't have to get a flat earth license plate. It's very, very cool if you do. And we've got a lot of the continental U.S. and I think half of the Canadian provinces because those are the only two countries I think that allow uh, personalized plates, which used to be called vanity plates down in the back in the day. I don't know why I changed it. I mean, it's true. Anyone that, that has a personalized plate, there is a little bit of vanity in there somewhere. I mean, you're trying to identify yourself. So I always like that term. Embrace what you are. That's what I say. This one's called 12 Slides. Hi, Mark. Can I get a copy of the 12 Slides? That's from Sevilla. Yep, you bet. And they did. This one's called Dear Mark. Literally, it's called just Dear Mark. Oh, here we go. I, by the way, again, just a reminder, if you're going to send me emails, uh, and I love the picture that was sent. It's of a crushed globe uh, on a pedestal laying out in like, an, like, a, like they're throwing stuff out of their house, like it's getting ready for the trash pickup. Uh, but if you're going to send me an email, make sure, you know, paragraphs take paragraphs break every once in a while otherwise i get dizzy trying to see this my eyes ain't what they used to be hello mark it was the autumn of 2017 when i first began truly delving into the theory behind flat earth i have actually written you before and i do believe in fact that you read one of my letters to close out an episode of strange world back over this last writer or oh, sorry winter wow there's my eyes sometime around elon musk's infamously recent space launch i ser sincerely appreciated not only your confident some might say eloquent conversational navigation of such a polarizing and interesting topic, but also the genuinely accessible nature of your character. Personally, I had a very uh, had very little trouble at all in opening myself up to what others may consider a life-altering perspective. To the contrary, such an idea actually proved to be more assuring to me than anything. I believe that to be the case because it almost prescribed some sort of sense to be dis to the disquiet. I don't use that word often. I have felt for quite some time an idea just crazy enough to be completely true. Why wouldn't it be flat? I'll admit it is just a bit troubling to me how difficult a time people generally tend to have when wrapping their heads around the idea that someone would lie to them. Well, yes, I genuinely do understand that becoming abreast to a lie perpetuated at your expense is nothing shy of a knife to the ego. I also believe that a healthy dose of humility should not be so generally hard to swallow. People seem to have this unshakable faith in whatever it is they currently believe and almost cement themselves unlovable, <laughs> unlovable to the humbling grace that is learning something new, admitting you were wrong at growing and growing from the experience. My girlfriend has always stood to the simple notion that in so many words, once we stop growing, we stop living. She is my very fr best friend, partner in life, and I adore her with all that I am. Uh, in the time since I wrote you last, her and I have actually begun building our very own mobile tiny home from what was once a camper. It's been difficult beyond what we could have imagined, but so incredibly worthwhile. In fact, we even document the entire build on my YouTube channel with a small series titled Coming Home, in which we shoot, score, and direct all ourselves. Life is rich, and love is such a wonderful thing, and I truly wish it for anyone humble enough to truly receive it. I ramble, but I apologize, Mark. What you're doing is inspiring, to say the very least, and I thank you for being you. Keep up the good work. Below, I included a photograph I took recently along my mail route. Oh, wow. So somebody was actually throwing out a globe. That's awesome. Stay flat, friend. I didn't know that until just now. Sincerely, ben Benjamin John. And I think the his YouTube channel is Benjamin Mograth. So cool. That's awesome. That's really, really great. And thank you for writing that. Moving on. 
This one's called My Flatter Thoughts and the Real Larger Earth the Size of Saturn. Mark, first my question. If the Earth is flat, then it should be possible to draw a map such that all land masses be their true size and shape without any distortion. Something like an AE map with land masses looking as per the Outhograph map. Have you come across such a map? No, I haven't yet. Remember, I'm the freshman recruiter. I have advanced maps that's in the building across the quad. My journey to becoming a flat earther. After my partner died two and a half years ago, I was drawn to YouTube looking for spiritual guidance, looking into live after death, NDE, then into American politics, which leads to 9-11, moon landings, etc. I was still looking at spiritual videos and into consciousness. Then I came across flat earth videos, which I may have watched 30 seconds of, but generally clicked away. I was not interested in FE. I remember watching the Bedford Lock video, but I act already knew about it but I was interested to watch. On one particular evening, I was getting FE videos up next to watch and became bombarded with FE and thought was why so many FE videos, such a high number, then a few seconds went by, then the answer to my thought about so many FE videos, the earth was flat. That was my FE moment, after which I started watching FE stuff. Then came across your Flat Earth Clues. Wow, after all that, then you run into Flat Earth Clues. Well, there's a lot of stuff out there. It took you that long. I watched them all. I think I already had enough information to work it out, but needed the extra push over the mental barrier. So for me, the Earth is not a globe. But also, these last few weeks, Earth is not flat due to the above question. Still looking for answers. Ah, I can see you're, you're holding out. You're 99% flat. Well, that's just fine. You know, as long as you're not going back to the globe, I'm happy. As someone very interested in astronomy, I've come across the strange north polar regions of Saturn and Jupiter with the magnetic regions going in circular motions, but with traveling south, the direction changes. If you map the clockwise, then anti-clockwise spiraling motion magnetic fields on, say, Saturn to the full globe of the Earth, I imagine at the point where rotation changes to be Earth's equator. So we could be living on a larger planet. Yes, of course you could be living on a larger planet. But either way, it's not the Earth that you know of, which is fine. If you think it's a larger planet, great. I don't think it's a larger planet because you still have to deal with the vacuum of space. But if hey, you're, you're taking that step, I'm all with you. Go to the larger planet. Eventually, you're going to come back to a, just a flat, enclosed building. Uh, but we all know that is only 15 degrees from the North Pole and two rotations causing an illusion of 180 degrees full planet. What do you think? Can explain more if needed. I, what I just said. I like it. That's from Keith Hutton uh, on YouTube as Astro King. Boy, you should really change that name. Should be Astro Flat or something like that. Uh, this one's called Why is Alphabet Using Balloons and Not Satellites? Never lose your connection. It's a it's a project. Oh, somebody sent me the Project Loon story. Never lose your connection again. Alphabet will launch six high altitude balloons to beam mobile internet to the remotest parts of the planet from next year. Yeah, yeah. Look up that title if you get a chance. That's a pretty big article. Cool. Thank you for that. Moving on. Twelve questions. Hi, Mark. Please send me the twelve questions. Keep it up. In fact, it's not you know what? It's, that's my fault. It's five questions, 12 slides. 12 slides from Just Jack, uh, the recent one of my recent subject matter experts. And then the five questions, which I threw at the astrophysicist from Georgetown at the request of a German television company. So five... Qu <laughs> now you're screwing me up. Five <laughs> questions, 12 slides, one survival guide, two coast-to-coast -coast interviews. That's all the stuff I got. Uh, anyway, that was from, he goes, keep it up. Let all know it is flat. That's from Lars Christensen. Don't know where he is. So thank you for that. This one's called flying at 90,000 feet. Hi, Mark. I have a friend who has his pilot's license. He said he was flying at 90,000 feet, saw the curvature of the earth many years ago. He claims the flat earth theory is completely false, unbiblical, etc. How would you reply to him? He insists that he saw the curvature. I am skeptical of his claims, but he is a good friend, and quite, flank, quite, quite frankly, I don't want to rock the boat with him, as it is not worth complicating our friendship. Anyway, you know his claims. What's your response? After considering the matter as much as I can, your enclosed world theory appears to be true to me, in the Enoch model. All the best to you and Patricia Steer, and that's from Brian. 
Okay, uh, and I sent him, uh, anyone that says they saw the curvature at really any altitude. I mean, remember, I have people that, that it's weird because there's there's no general consensus of this. There are people that say, oh, I've seen the, the curvature from an airplane. I've seen the curvature from a mountain. I've seen a curvature from a building. And then, of course, it's like some people say, no, you can absolutely see the curvature from the beach. So who's right? Well, none of them's right because I can send them multiple videos of weather balloons at 120,000 feet which show it to be flat. So if it's flat at 120,000 feet, how can it be curved at 90 or 30 or 10 or I don't know, zero? How can that happen? It can't. Uh, it's, it's, again, it's just conditioning. You want to see the curvature. You're told it's a curve for so many years. Uh, it, again, that's Orwellian. Straight, straight, straight out of um, uh, Five Lights, which is, you know, you show somebody, it's a torture routine. It's a, it's a mental breakdown. That's how you know you got them. You put four lights up on the you know up on the wall and say how many lights do you see, and you, they say four. No, you keep beating them and say no. There's five, and eventually your mind will come around, and you will see five lights, which is weird. But anyway, so yeah, that's the same sort of thing. You we we didn't have to be tortured. Just you just tell people it's a globe. It's a globe. It's a globe. It's a globe. You show it in school. You show it in movies. You show it in television. Uh, show it in books. Show it on corporate logos. And doesn't take that long, especially if you're engaged. You will believe it, especially with science fiction movies. You know, we love Star Wars and Star Trek and Stargate and all the other space movies. And you know, we we want to believe in space. We really, really do. It's suspension of disbelief. So there you go. This one's called No Subject. Mark, my friend was working 150 kilometers near the North Pole, found this interesting. He's never even heard of FE, but here you go, bro. Uh, lens of the dome. All right, so I'm clicking on it. Hopefully it's not too huge. It's only 97K. Oh yeah, sundog thing. Yeah, sundogs are interesting. If you want to look up something that has really interesting, look up sundogs and how it looks like there's some sort of lensing effect happening from whatever the structure is the ceiling of this place and you know science has an explanation for it but it's not very good this one's called flat earth evidence and hi mark sending you this from south africa thanks for sticking out your neck and being prepared to speak out regardless of your personal reputation my husband and i have believed the earth is flat for a couple of years now because of people like you but have been watching specifically your flat earth clues over the past week or so. We've been aware that evolution is a serious lie for years now, so it was fairly easy to open our minds to the evidence for flat earth, though I must say it took a while. Well, yeah, I would hope so. One day, my son, who's about 25, posted a flat earth video on his Facebook page. There was such a reaction to that. Shocking. I admit I was rather perturbed as I was far from convinced at the time. I felt so sad for him, in fact. The, though looking at it now, it was a brave thing to do. He's an officer on a motor yacht currently in the Mediterranean. He has told me that a few of his captains he has worked under have come to believe that the earth is flat. Yeah. Uh, and if a boater believes that, well, then you got something. I've got a boater cousin, career boater, a yachts person. And uh, she, she will not talk to me currently because... She absolutely, no, doesn't, I don't want to get into it. Uh, tonight, my husband started to read a book called 1421 by Gavin Menzies. Maybe someone else has brought this to your attention, but I'd just like to quote page 35. In those days, satellite navigation was unknown. We had to find our way by the stars. I saw the same stars those great European explorers had seen and calculated my position by measuring the height and direction of the sun. Page 38, Columbus... Uh, da Gama, Magellan, and Cook were later to make the same discoveries, but they all knew they were following in the footsteps of others, for they were carrying copies of the Chinese maps. Hmm. These explorers must have also known the sun was inside our atmosphere, and no doubt that the earth was flat. A few years ago, my husband read a book by Captain Slocum that built his own boat and circumnavigated the globe. When he stopped at Cape Town in South Africa, he was met by the president of South Africa at the time, Paul Kruger. He explained to Kruger that he was circumnavigating the globe, but Kruger told him that he was mistaken as the earth was flat. This account is also quoted in Zetetic Cosmogony, 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 apparently. You may know everything I am telling you above, but just in case you don't, I thought I'd add it to your arsenal of info. Many thanks for all the information we have gained by watching your videos. Regards, Tracy Bauer. You're welcome, Tracy. Hopefully you're still listening to this stuff. This one's called FE Question. Mark, I've been studying Flat Earth for a year now, watched several of your vids, and it makes sense to me. I do have a question, though. I live in Oregon, and my brother-in-law lives in Wasilla, Alaska. 
And now in September, the sun is heading south. The circle is making, is getting bigger. Why is their day longer than ours here in Oregon? What am I missing? Uh, well, if you listen to the first part of the show, you would have already gotten that because we, you know, Rob Skiba does a fantastic 3D model of this. Again, it's a needle on a record player. That's all it is. But I don't mind repeat questions. It happens every time I go to a film festival now. I mean, I hear the same questions, you know, first day questions all the time. Uh, this is called Debate How You Can Bait Them In. Mark, I have been following you for a few months. While I was leaning towards your proofs that blow away mainstream theories, I'm still a little skeptical. My thoughts are if you were to set up a GoFundMe account with the goal of a million dollars and offer a, that dumbass Tyson, it would be game over whether he accepts or not. I would definitely contribute. Thanks for all your hard work, Steve. And I'm assuming that what he means there is the um, a debate with Neil deGrasse Tyson. But it, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson's not going to be. He's never debated anyone in his life. So if he does, great. Uh, fantastic. But I don't think he's going to. Moving on. This one's called Your Interview with Connie. Hi, Mark. Thanks for sending all the material to me. Did you go to college for computer science? Uh, no, because computer science really didn't even exist when I was in university. I was, uh, I went, remember I graduated from high school in 85 and then I drank my way through my first year and then um, went up to Western up in Bellingham for a number of years, but then thrown out my junior year. For a whole nother story for another time, but yeah, there was no computer science. In fact, I was one of the few kids that was even on campus that didn't have to use the computer lab. A lot of people don't know that back in the day, you know, before everybody had their own PCs, you know, to, to work on papers at home, you had to go, you had to, there was a computer lab that was open all the time on campus and you go up there and work on very, very basic word, proprietary word processors. And, you know, group printers and oh, anyway, so I'm sorry. Uh, you seem very computer intelligent. Yes, that is because I stayed in the field. So I won a computer game tournament in 94. And by then, you know, the internet was just starting to ramp up. Uh, and then I worked for a video game company for a number of years out in Colorado. And then I stayed in Colorado and worked. I taught proprietary software. And all my friends were high end geeks. Uh, I should say high functioning geeks. It's like saying a high functioning alcoholic, but it's true. They were all super neo maxi zoom dweebies. And I was, I was lucky to be part of them. I learned a lot about tech through these guys. And uh, in fact, one of my good friends out there was, I think at the time, probably one of the finest game players in the world. Uh, again, another story for another time. So yeah, I stayed and, and did that for a long, long time. Anyway, so continuing with the letter. I am about halfway through the interview. I think the Coast to Coast interview I did with Connie. I was wondering if you and Rob Skiba and Robbie Davidson see eye to eye on the subject of other civilizations beyond Antarctica ice plane. Yeah, similar. Rob Skiba and Robbie Davidson, though, they stick on the biblical side. And, and in fact, the, the email continues, and I think he's going to get to that. I believe in the literal six-day creation. Do you? Yes, but you have to break down the definition of a day. So a day in God's uh, language is how many human years? Because time is relative. Uh, so what is, what is the definition of a day? I, I don't know. Uh, you have to ask God. Uh, this is one very important reason I think the earth is biblical. I, I believe that too. Uh, the Bible is a flat earth book, no question. With the exception of Isaiah 40, 22, which is the only one in debate. And even then... He who sits upon the circle of the earth, not ball, not globe, not sphere, circle, dinner plate is circle. Uh, when I hear you speaking about other civilizations and even aliens, do, do I mention aliens? I mentioned that there's other civilizations, older versions of us. Are they from Saturn and Jupiter and Venus? No, 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 I don't think that. I'm feeling discouraged and worried. He, I'm continuing with the email, especially about taking my husband to the Denver convention. I really do believe in flat earth and I can handle some of the crazy speculative talk, but this is where you would totally lose credibility to a lot of people. Well, you mean Christians by that? Look, I, I can't. And why do you think there is other life beyond the ice plane? And that's from Teresa. And I'm pretty sure I wrote her back, right? Did I? No, I didn't. But you know what? If they come to the conference, that's fine. If they don't, they don't. Uh, I hope they do. Because look, it's a, uh, it's the, the conference, the, the main promoter for the conference is a uh, hardcore Christian. And I, I was, again, raised a born again Christian, went to vacation Bible school and youth group and Camp Malibu and all that other fun stuff. 
but getting into flat earth, remember, I'm the freshman recruiter. I cannot discriminate. So you can't tell me to ignore the other four religions and they're pretty big. You know, Christianity, because we're in America, we like to think we're the only game in town. But, you know, there's Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam. Each of them has, I don't know, a billion people. So I, there's no way. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not going to discriminate and say, oh, that flat earth is, is just a Christian thing. It, it's not. It's not. Now, if you want to say, and which, what I mean is, did the Christian God build the flat earth? Very possible. I'd like to, I'd like to think so. Let's hope that's the case, you know, because I don't mean to belittle religion in any way, but I've, I've been, you've heard me say it before, which is, you know what, uh, when it comes to religion, the first God that shows up wins. So you better be sure it's yours. And if you're not, you better, better be open-minded. And that's what I am. I'm just open-minded. I'm the freshman recruiter for this thing. Okay, moving on. Next email. This one's called Vacuum Chamber. Hi, Mark. See if you guys can put a tire in a chamber. Uh, yeah, there's there's all sorts of videos. You want to watch some fun videos on this. Uh, and I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be bringing a basketball to the conference because it illustrates a point. Uh, this video on YouTube is called Football in a Vacuum Chamber. And there are lots of videos that, that cover, in fact, look, just look up something in a vacuum chamber. Just type in in a vacuum chamber on YouTube and you'll see tons and tons of stuff uh, because people like to put, especially guys, it's like people that put their arms in vacuum chambers. Vacuum chambers are, are, are very, very dangerous. I don't encourage anyone to put their, the, any body parts in a vacuum chamber. And the reason is, is because anything that has oxygen in it immediately expands to try to equal equalize the pressure. That's how things work. That's how, why a basketball is hot, you know, hard. It's stiff. You, you know, you can't crush a basketball unless you're super, super, super strong. Uh, it's, it's, it's stiff. And that's because the pressure on the inside is trying to get out. You know, you pump it up with a hand pump and there's extra air in there and, and it wants to equalize. And a vacuum chamber takes it even further. So you take a vacuum chamber, you throw any object in that and it will get very, very tight and then burst. And you're saying, okay, Mark, what's your point? My point is, is there's only one object that I know of that doesn't act that way. I mean, like, you know, you put a basketball in a vacuum chamber and it gets really, really tight. Will it, will it detonate? Eh, maybe, maybe not. It really depends. I mean, a pure vacuum, yeah, probably will. A 100% vacuum. Same thing with a car tire. A car tire is, is rated to get higher than that. But let's face it, we've, we all have heard stories. You can take an air, uh, air valve and pump up a tire, you know, at, at a gas station and make it blow up if you wanted to. Doesn't take that much. So the, the, the thing is, is all these objects, I don't care if it's a football or a basketball or a volleyball or a soccer ball or a tire or whatever it is, or a, even a weather balloon, you know, a weather balloon starts out very, very loose. And when it gets up at 120,000 feet, it's super, super tight. And then it bursts because eventually it gets closer to that pure vacuum, that pure vacuum goodness. And so, okay, what's my point? My point is, is there's only one object that does not do this. And that's a spacesuit. It's an astronaut suit. Astronaut suit does the exact opposite. It seems to be perfectly flexible, no matter what pressure it's in. It, you can bend your arms, bend your legs, and your knees, uh, fingers. Tell me how the fingers work. Tell me how you can how you can do a complex uh, electronics with fingers that should not be able to even bend. If you even you could say you had leg strength to move your legs in a vacuum suit, how you're doing it with your fingers it doesn't doesn't work. It's and you're saying okay, well, I say well, only one of two choices here, either. The astronaut suit is defying all known pressure physics or they're actually not in a vacuum. Which one would you pick? Probably the easiest one. They're not in a vacuum. They're just on some soundstage. So there you go. This one's called Flat Earth Funny Joke. All right, let's hear it. Uh, Mark, globes are not... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyone can go to... It's weird. You go to any store nowadays. I don't know why it's... It's strange. Go to any store and buy a globe that's sitting in the knickknack department, right? Or just any globe. I don't, I don't care if it's if it's just for a shelf or and it says globes are not for educational purpose, but only decorative purpose. Yeah. It's, yeah. Globe. The, the, any pictures. In fact, let me look at the pictures real fast. I'm pretty sure it's the same stickers on everywhere. It's really quick. It says globes are not meant for educational purpose, but only decorative purpose. And it's in multiple languages. And it looks like a full-blown regular globe. So why would you put the disclaimer on there? It's not educational. It's only decorative. Why would you Why would you put that disclaimer on the globes you're selling? Why even bother? Odd, don't you think? This one's called 12 Pictures. 
Mark, several weeks ago, I believe it was, you mentioned something or other about an email regarding 12 pictures that someone kept on their phone to help convince newcomers that the earth was flat. Do you have those pictures to where you can email them to me? Just getting ready for the Fly Earth meetup and wanted some extra material. Thanks. Stay flat. Randy from Bentonville. And yeah, yeah, 12 pictures. If you guys want the 12 pictures sent by 12, by 12, these numbers are stuck in my head now. If you want the 12 pictures, just send me an email. Say you want the 12 pictures. I'll just shoot it to you. And no, I'm not probably not going to put it up on a website for you to download because then I'd still have to give you the website. It's actually just as quick for me to just send it to you. It's a, it's a little zipped up folder on my machine. I can shoot it to you. This one's called the most BS picture tweet Chris Hatfield ever tweeted. Mark, I don't need to type anything. The picture says it all. The most obviously CGI picture ever. Uh, yeah, Chris Hatfield sent a pic on Twitter. Five storms swirl. Wow, he sent that. Tw five storms swirling. You can count them. Olivia, Paul, Florence, Isaac, and Hurricane Helene, which my wife is going to love, I imagine, because her name is Helene. Uh, yeah, and he tweeted this shot. Oh my, yeah, it's it's a terrible. Oh, why is the Earth so blue if it's reflecting the blackness of space? Uh, why why you have these perfect greens and browns? You know, um, ugh. It, I'm sorry, the the color the color palette's all wrong. It, I mean, they're all wrong. It's just it's terrible. This one's called an observation. Hello, Mark. I just wanted to tell you about an observation I've made that happens regularly. On a day with low scattered clouds, you will find as the sun appears to set, the cloud will be dark underneath because the sun is above it, therefore rendering the underside it in shadow. As the sun continues to set, the same cloud will be illuminated on its underside for a brief period, causing it to glow brightly. Uh, then as the sun continues to set, the cloud's underside will again go dark as the sun dips below the horizon. I am sure you have seen this phenomena as most people have spent their time enjoying such nights. That would not be possible if the earth was flat. It's a simple observation, but powerful in its implications. Regards, John. And uh, yeah, if you want to look for fun stuff on that, uh, there's two websites that are, or two channels uh, that'll explain it in great, great detail with great videos. One is DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, and the other one is Zetetic Astronomy. Or no, Zeteticism.com. Zeteticism.com. Wow. Sorry, I screwed that up. There's a lot of things going through my head right now because I'm still trying to. I haven't written the speech yet for the conference which is coming up a couple weeks, but I'm going to. It's not going to be very long because I still got to do a QA. and a They're going to give me, I think, 75 minutes for my session, which will be great. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Paper. Hey, Mark, first off, I would like to say it's awesome how you are so bold with your beliefs and have challenged the way I think greatly, and I totally believe in the Flat Earth now. I have a huge research paper that I'm writing on my topic, so I chose Flat Earth. Thank you for all the content you have put out there for free. With your permission, I would like to use some of the videos in my presentation and quotes from my paper. Keep up the phenomenal groundbreaking truth. That's from Ryan, and I wrote him back and said, yeah, you guys can use anything you want for any paper. Run with it. Go with it. Get jiggy with it. I know that's a Will Smith reference, but I had to do it. This one's called Spinning Wheel, called Flights. Mark, I'm just waking up. Saw your YouTube on Clues. Would you comment on this flight I found? Uh, and it's from, oh, look at that, Johannesburg to Perth. Thanks. That's from Bradley. Uh, yeah, anyone that, I, I usually ignore those emails because that's why I made Clue 9. So I made Clue 7 and I said, look, there's just, I can't find any freaking nonstop flights in the Southern Hemisphere. And it took some while. And then people wrote back, says, no, there's like five. And it's like, so out of the hundreds and hundreds of flights in the Southern Hemisphere between all these cities, you found five nonstop flights. And that doesn't strike you as odd. We have countless nonstop flights in the northern hemisphere but 90 something percent of the flights in the southern hemisphere are weird super odd connections and that doesn't bother you it's like no no there's a flight it's like and that proves what exactly that there's nothing funny going on nobody ugh, sorry small minds uh the the reason why i mentioned that is that in the Northern Hemisphere, you can get non-stop flights to just about anything. And there was a travel agent, corporate travel agent in the Southern Hemisphere that wrote me and said, in fact, I did that as one of my subject matter experts and, and said that it, you don't know how, hot, you know how frustrating it is being a travel agent in the Southern Hemisphere because there are flights between capital cities, capital cities that do not exist in the Southern Hemisphere. It doesn't matter how much money you pay, you cannot get a corporate 
nonstop flight between some of these cities. Can it cannot be done? And you know, as we know in the northern hemisphere, it's, nothing's impossible. You can pay anything you want. You can charter a whole plane and get nonstops, and it doesn't happen down there. Uh, this is called Flat Earth Question. Hey, Mark, just saw the $100,000 challenge by that guy, Ray, and I was wondering if you can give me some more info on it so I can put it on my Facebook and other social media accounts. Thanks. Once you go flat, you can never go back uh, to the globe. Stay flat. And that's from Ilian Stefanov. And I don't I don't really have any information on this. It's not like everybody contacts me for everything. Again, I'm the freshman recruiter, and Flat Earth, as it gets bigger and bigger, I'm, I'm just grasping at, you know, trying to get just get my, you know, find out what ever, all the people are doing, but there's no high counsel. You know, you make content, you resonate, and if it's great, you get invited to, to do things, and that's really all there is to it. We don't have a governing body, though. There's no sanctions, which is great. You know, people can run and run with it and do whatever. And, and organize some fantastic things like the meetups. I didn't organize really 99% of the meetups that were in that I, that I promote on my channel. They're all done spontaneously from people. I just, they just send me the information and I promote it. This one's called 12 Picks FE Proofs. Mark, can you please send me the 12 pictures on the last subject matter expert? I know. Sorry, Caroline. Pictures, pictures. I'm supposed to use more, enunciate that more. Pictures. I say pictures. That's because I don't like the C that's in there. It should be just P-I-T-U-R-E-S. That's from Brent. This one's called Preparedness List and some Flat Earth Truther Survival Tactics. Um, let me see here. Okay, let me read this. I, sorry, usually it's, it's pretty long, but I, I think I can read it. Hey, Mark, Constance quiet, quietly riot here. Please send me your prepper list as I find these interesting. You might have something on there that globe preppers haven't thought of, like not having to factor in curvature for survival. Yeah, you know, for survival purposes, you don't really need curvature. Also, please send the 12 slides by Just Jack. I wrote down the list when he was on your show, but I'd like to see the visuals he actually chose might be better than what I've seen. I so enjoy all of your shows from the very first time I listened. I've come across Rob Skiba and friends, virtual house church gatherings, and was learning so much. But this just had me hanging on to the edge, thinking this is where I fall off. But that there was our creator so patiently waiting for me to be ready for this next step, I had recently come to the conclusion that all truth matters and things merited investigation, no matter how outlandish, if anything, to eliminate the, the what? Dross? Dross? And hold on to the pure gold. Discernment is absolutely necessary, all the more so in this day and age. I'm still stuck on that word dross, D-R-O-S-S. I have never even seen that word before my life, and I'm not young. Uh, well, he did not disappoint, and as I've said to you in a call-in show, I don't regret it for a moment and will never go back. Like you, I've been called a shill, an agent, and all kinds of degrading names. In fact, just because I gave a shout-out on your show for a dear, precious flat earther, she got blackballed by some zealots. Yeah, I know, some people... Again, it happens. There's nothing you can do. You're not going to... Nobody bats a thousand. There's always going to be somebody that doesn't like you. As I like to say, you can make a... Um, a video with a puppy chasing a kitten or playing with a kitten in a in a grassy meadow with a butterfly you know hovering above them and somebody is going to come in in the first hour and thumbs down and comment say this is effing gay it's, literally it's what they're gonna do just because they have so much hate and anger in their life they they have to take it out you know on things that are nice uh let's see that tells me those same zealots are listening to your shows just waiting to pounce on and block anyone that participates or gets an endorsement or mention on your shows. Our conduct, our words, our attitudes, our choices all speak volumes about the innermost being and character. Ask questions, yes, but don't turn it into a grand inquisition. What goes around comes around. And the more folks realize that, the less they would bite and stab and attack other folks that simply don't agree with them on a few points. I'm not for unity at any cost, but I am for truth at all cost and at all times. My question to any who think it's a bad thing to be involved with you and or your show is what does that say about the field experts who have volunteered information to confirm level and stationary earth facts? Are they agents or shills too? Hey, food for thought number one. We are all agents. Yes, we are agents, aka ambassadors for truth or for lies. Let us choose wisely. Number two, truth can't, can't be faked and lies will never be true. Three, observe more and observe less about people. 
observe more and assume less about people. Number four, this is not a popularity contest. Success will be determined by the most high, not a peer review. And then she says, hopping off my soapbox, sending you bear hugs and tons of smiles. Love you, Mark, and all the F.E. family. Quietly riot. And then she has a biblical verse at the end there. That's awfully nice. And yeah, it's just not much I can do. You know, there's going to be people. People hated me in the like the first week I came out. I, I'm not going to name names, but you know who they are. And I still have haters to this day, which is fine. If you hate me, great. Don't don't really care. I don't look at the comments much, and 99% of the emails I'm I'm answering these emails. I mean, very few troll emails do I get, and almost almost no uh, crank calls. You know, because my phone number's out there too. And uh, in fact, I got I finally got some crank calls last night, but they were just some drunk stoned Canadian guys. Usually, it's a group of guys. It's like we should call up this flat Earth guy and just start you know giving him hell, and that's it. They left like six messages just rapid fire it's like why don't you call us back man why don't you go i only listened to like the first two and then the other ones are just yeah just delete them but very rare and again ne almost never sober i i can't remember the last time somebody called me up to give me uh, grief when they were sober this one's called Cy dan man is making fun uh mark he avoided most of the answers but he somehow destroyed you yeah i know that Cy dan man uh, I don't necessarily believe in his sub count. He, he he went up the ranks of the science community pretty quick. I remember the, the science does not have a lot of people that are as enthusiastic as Flat Earth. So he generated a lot of subs really, really quickly. And now he's, oh, was he at 80,000, 85,000, something like that? Yeah, sorry, not, not buying it. And he never emailed me. Maybe he should. Or call me, leave me a message. They never do. Which is weird because he's really just a flat earth troll. That's all he does. I mean, he tries to do it. It's like, oh, you know, flat earth Fridays. No, he's thinking about flat earth all the time because that's what gets the hits. People have been coattailing us for a while now. Uh, love it or hate it. Can't ignore flat earth. Moving on. This is called, please share the five science questions. Hi, Mark. If you could be so kind to forward me your five science questions, it'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, John. Yep Did that. This one's called 12 slides. Good evening, Mark. Please, uh, 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 send me the 12 slides you speak about in your YouTube videos. I like to have them on my phone. Have a great evening, Doug. Yep. This one's called No Subject. <laughs> and he goes, and Coast to Coast video. Thanks. Send it all. And that was from, yeah, that was from Jeff. That one I already did. I, I've got little bookmarks here. To, to, I, I know who I've already sent it to. Uh, I'm, and I'm still, yes, I'm still working off September and I know it's November. I'm, I'm losing ground. Sometimes it's better than others. I mean, really depends, but yeah, I'm still in September. This one's called uh, YouTube channel observable reality. Hello, Mr. Sergeant. Thank you for your videos. I have an icon cool Pix P900 camera. I've made some videos of sunrise and sunset. I'm in Wenatchee in Washington state. I know Wenatchee well been there many times i have tried to get sunrises from high elevations 6200 feet and 7000 feet the smoke from the wildfires has obscured some of the action i started a youtube channel and posted some of my videos youtube channel observable reality his name's steven so check that out if you get a chance this one's called funny flat earth pick and it's a dress i think it's actually a real dress that's made out of a mercator map and there's it's it's a meme where people says babe does this dress make me look Wait for it. Flat. Yeah, it does in this case. And it's not, it's just a mannequin wearing it. It's not a woman. Uh, this one's called No Subject. Hello, Mark. My name is Russ. I'm currently going through that disoriented phase where all the information is being sucked into my brain and I can't sleep. Yeah, I know what you mean. Man. It usually takes about two weeks, two, maybe three. Because I'm challenging the flat earth versus heliocentric model in my head. The implications of all this are really high stakes. and I'd like to communicate with like-minded and be part of this movement and learn more. I have questions and points I'd like to make. I'd like to contribute. I'm a bigger fan. Please respond and guide me through some of this. And that's from, he didn't sign his name. Come on, I'd help you out, but I, I don't have a name. So hopefully, I, they'll be fine. You know, a lot of people go through no sleep and you gotta come through the other side of that tunnel. This one's called, this guy needs a wake up call. Mark, we need to respond to this soon. Out of the gate, a high quality sea level zoom video, uh, 50 mics. Oh, you're military, huh? 
uh, 50 mics plus, uh, at least that's miles. At least he isn't being a total jerk about it, but there we go. Maybe Jaron wants to take this guy on. All right, whose video was it? This video was made by, oh, look, it's Cy Dan, man. Flat Earth leader gets his five points ruined. Yeah. Uh, hey, thank you, by the way, for the for the extra hits on my channel. So, yeah, Cy, Di Cy Man Dan published this on September 14th, right? And yeah, he's got 80,000 subs and this thing's got 200,000 views. Where are these views <laughs> coming from? He doesn't even, I'm, you know, he mentions my name in the video. In fact, is he, uh, here's the original amp of Mark's opening statement. Awesome. Very, very cool. And no, I will never respond to that because he's no one. And uh, no, this is called 12 picks in an interview. So he's had like two turntables and a microphone. Hi, Mark. I'm new to this, but I can't debunk it yet. I told my wife about it. She seems to agree. I don't know why women seem to believe easier than men do. Probably because they're smarter. Or they're just more open-minded. Period. M women are just more open-minded about a lot of things. If you have any question, think back to college. At university, women were way more open-minded. Can I get the 12 proofs pick and the interview, please? Thank you. Yes, you can. And you did. This one's called Educating the Public. Hi, Mark. I'm listening to your Q&A emails number 83. You just read a teacher's email who stopped working. I'm not sure if you remember. I'm an architect. I've been considering finding a way to start an online school for Flat Earth families' children. I don't think any of those who have learned the truth are willing to send their children to a regular school and prefer them uh, homeschooled. I know running a school with a whole new and complete curriculum is a very big step, but if there is one organizer who can put it all together, at least create some... Uh, educational packages for these families. I, I, we'll get there. I mean, yeah, Flat Earth University is a thing, but it's not a physical thing. Right now, it's just kind of a general concept. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. I have shared my idea with Bob at Globusters too. Any feedback on this would be highly appreciated. My YouTube channel is yuppie yup, 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 0123. Keep up the great work. Sincere regards, Faranak. And yeah, I know it's a good idea. We're 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 getting there. I mean, again, we've got the the Flat Earth University banner. It was made by Karen B. That's out there and it looks really really cool. Are we going to actually have a physical accredited university? Oh, maybe. Or actually, what will probably happen is all the normal universities will just adjust to the new Flat Earth paradigm. This one's called Twelve Slides and Five Questions. Hey, Mark. This is Nelson out of Colorado. Could I get you to send me the 12 slides and five questions? I'm hoping to make it to the Denver FE convention. So hopefully I will see you there. Thanks. And that's, yeah, it's from Nelson. And what he's talking about, if you don't know, we got like 10, nine, nine days, eight days, 10 days, 11. I don't remember. It's uh, November 15th and 16th in Denver, Colorado. You can check it out at fe2018.com. And I'm going to be speaking there. Yes. This one's called Love Your Work. Hi, Mark. My name is Tammy, and I'm a huge fan of your work. I thank you for everything you do to help people understand the flat earth. I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I went to a few flat earth meetups, but I was really sad, like eight people in the food court of a mall. Oh, yeah, that was back in the day when they were first starting those. I'm dying to meet more FE people. Would love to meet you. I'm going to try to come to the international meeting in Denver uh, with my best friend, Jackie. I wanted to say hello and introduce myself to you, and thank you. I hope to get to see you in Denver. Sincerely, Tammy Silverman. Yep. Love to see you, Tammy. Hopefully you are still coming. I know all the VIP tickets are sold out, but I will be in the lobby a lot on the first day. I'm going to go to Karen B's conference, but I'm going to be trying to dedicate most of my time in the first day to meeting people in the lobby and uh, just talking, talking to a lot of different um, uh, media organizations as well. And whoever the mystery guest is. We still don't know who the mystery uh, A-lister is, and it's not the, the A-lister that I've already met or have heard about, uh, if you've if you heard about any of the shows, um, no, it's not that person. It's somebody else. And we will not know until the week of the conference. They're going to make a press release and then come out and shoot this thing. Apparently, they're going to have more cameras than just about anybody, which is interesting because there's a lot of cameras going to be there. This one's called, hi, Mark. Baz from the UK here, longtime listener, first time emailer, loving your work. Keep it up. I am keeping the flat earth here in the old country. Would love the 12 slides and your five questions, please. Thank you, Baz. Yep, sent those to him. This one's called 12 slides and five questions. Dear Mark, I'd be grateful if you could send me the 12 slides and the five questions. Thanks a million. Lars in Sweden. Sweden. Yep, he got them too. 
This one's called Update Your Webmail Account. Oh, man. I should click on that. It's a really weird letter from what appears to be Comcast. Uh, there's a recent change in our billing server due to slightly problems. Hmm. That's probably just a typo. A recent change in your personal information, i.e. change of address and the period's in the wrong place, an inability to accurately verify your selected option of payment due to an internal error with our processors. Oh, man. I mean, the, the, the link looks legit. I should click on it, right, guys? It's at comcast.net slash update. Yeah, I'm sure it's not rerouting to anything. It's, um, it's, where, where does this go? Maya Film X U V P boy. I don't know. Well, I'll click on it later. I'm sure it's fine. I get a lot of those for some reason. This one's called Coast to Coast Interview. Hey, Mark, send me the Coast to Coast Interview. Thanks, Mike Sadaway. Yep. Sent that to him. If you wonder where I got the yep thing, it's from Dr. Krieger in the television show Archer. Probably the finest written show on television. Animated, of all things. Um, Mar this was called, Can You Send It All? And question, okay for on air. Glad he clarified it. Some people, that I love it. You, you've heard me say it. And I do not edit those. If somebody put it at the very end, do not breed on air. If you put that at the very end of your email, sorry, it's going up anyway. You roll the dice, you take your chances. This one's called Mark, enjoy, I'm sorry, it's called Can You Send It All? Mark, enjoy the shows and support for truth. Wanting to see the 12 images proving Flat Earth, your survival guide and the audio for the show you can't publish on uh, online. Yeah, coast to coast. Of all the people, I've done all these interviews and coast to coast will not let you. You, you basically, you have to sign. It's not that they won't let you. I mean, they could put a copyright strike on, uh, on an interview, but I signed a thing. I signed a release form that says I will not do it. So I have no legal leg to stand on anything else you have please throw it my way question listen to your interview with the 32nd degree mason very surprised when you stated you wanted to go back in time and interview albert pike as he would be one of your most interesting men yeah because he's got because albert pike had the ring of power that's why um considering your knowledge of the, his link to the occult and foundation of the current masonic order why would this man get an honor of your visit oh it's, it's nice to th say they would be an honor to be visited by me in a time travel machine and that's ha happy with flatness wade in arlington texas no in fact i was talking about this with a friend the other day no it's because albert no i don't think albert pike was a necessarily a special man but he had the ring he had the, from what i i could gather he had the signet of solomon and otherwise known as the Ring of Power. And you go, that's Lord of the Rings. Like, yeah, you think that was just a movie? No, 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 not at all. It was not just a movie. That ring exists. It's out there somewhere. Uh, the Vatican hunted for it for a long time. It's, it goes into the whole myth of the Knights of Templar. It is steeped. It is one of the reasons the, the Masons even exist is because they found the Ring of Power and they hid it. And I don't know if anyone can even wear it. It's not one of those things where everybody can wear the ring. You know, weird stuff happens, I think, to some people. Maybe some people die. But he apparently could wear it. Uh, and if you read the legend of Albert Pike, he could summon beings, but it was tied to... Uh, the, the legend goes that these these magical bracelets that he had and I thought that was really really interesting because of course if you're sneaky uh, you don't tell people the real thing it's like wow how could you do this weird magical stuff well it's these bracelets because of that way if somebody comes after you what are they going to steal they're going to steal the bracelets you don't tell them where the power really comes from anyway thought it was fascinating so yeah I'd absolutely because I'd want to go back in time and find this guy and go okay, alright how, how are you doing it it's the ring, isn't it? I'm 99% sure it's the signet of, signet of Solomon. Look that up if you get a chance. And that's from the non-canonized book with the Mason, which the Masons love, which is called the Testament of Solomon. So there you go. I know more about Masonry than most Masons do. Let's put it that way. But no, I'm not a Mason. Sorry. The dinner theater production that they do on a regular basis behind closed doors. If you if you've read up, and you can look it up. It's not hard to find online. It's just so boring. Sorry, if you watch enough on stage productions and musical theater, you you know the good stuff and the bad stuff. It's just not good. Okay, let's see if we can find one to end on. This one's called A Fantastic Flat Earth Documentary from Brazil. Hi, Mark. Have you seen this outstanding documentary from Brazil? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Um, and let's see here. It's pretty much entirely agrees with you, except it doesn't mention a dome. It is necessarily to have a dome firmament covering your earth in order to protect us from dangerous cosmic rays coming from outer space beyond the dome. Then again, you're stuck on space. Who says there's space? The book of Genesis mentions that the firmament 
uh, are highly radioactive to us, hence the necessity of a dome. By the way, one quick question: I have just one. I'm just curious to know who was Jaren's close friend who was having an. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not going to get into that. That's the whole Jaren Bob Missa thing, and and Bob had nothing to do with it. Nope, nope, nope. Had nothing to do with it. You have any questions about Jaren? You ask Jaren. Anyway, that's from Brian. This one's called Slides. Hi, Mark. Hope you're doing well. I uh, hear day after day you get emails for the 12 slides or five questions. I was thinking, wouldn't it be easier if you put them all up in one video and upload it on your channel instead of sending them uh, one by one? Just a suggestion. By the way, uh, if there's going to if there's going to be any meetup in Toronto anytime soon. All the best, Farnock. I think I had an email from him earlier. Um, uh, Toronto, no, no, not sure. Not sure. I mean, just look up Flat Earth Meetup Toronto or Flat Earth Toronto. You'll find something. Uh, let's see here. Fraud alert. Unusual activity detected in your Citibank account. Ooh. Uh, I, I should update my bank account from Citibank. Wait, I don't have a Citibank account. Why are they sending this to me? There must be some mistake. Uh, uh, whatever. I'll just wait until I actually get a fraud alert from my bank and then I'll click on that one. This one's called Flat Earther Census. Hey, Mark, is it time for a head count? Thanks. Uh, uh, thinking of building a website, flatearthercensus.com or similar. Yeah, good luck there. Remember, there's a reason why I say the Flat Earthers are in the closet. They're not coming out for your census thing. Any ideas how to make something simpler that allows you to register? Register Flat Earthers? Yeah, good luck. Sorry, not to poke at you, Sean, but you got to understand that just because you're out, a lot of you aren't out. Then... Yeah, I, I, okay, wait, so let me just finish the email. Perhaps just your input on zip code, postcode, take a number, watch another light marker go up on the flat earth register. Have to make it zoomable, ensure uh, would need to every flat earth YouTube content provider broadcast on the, on the URL so the word gets out. Knowing there are converts in a person's neighborhood can encourage more flat earth activism. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, look, everyone comes out in their own time. I, like how long, did, how long did this A-lister that's coming to the conference here in Denver, how long did it take them? How long did it take Kyrie Irving? How long did it take B.O.B. or any of the other sports people out there to come out? Just everyone in their own time. Can't push them. Can't, uh, flat Earth registration system in the conspiracy world? The conspiracy world just doesn't like registration systems, period. Uh, let's see. Let me, let me, we'll end on this one. This is tied to the conference. Uh, nope, nope, we're not any on that one. This one's called Sunbeams Are Raked. Hi, Mark. This morning I saw looking at the sunrise and the beams from the sun uh, were clearly raked. What I mean is the beams were not parallel. How can this be? What is the reason for the raked sunbeams? That's from Matt. Uh, go to TITRH, does some great stuff. Go to My Perspective, go to zeteticism.com. All those are great sites. See if I can, I can find something to end on here. This one's called Flat Earth Lone Wolf. Hi, Mark. Good day to you. I'd be super happy if you could kindly send me your 12 picks to help me spread the truth to my family and friends. I'm a flatty from the Philippines. Please continue your work. It saddens me when I don't see new videos from your channel on a daily basis. Look, I can't make them every day. I do a lot of stuff. Like I'm doing a radio thing tomorrow. I'm doing this thing today on and tomorrow's monday and then tuesday i have a show and then wednesday i have a um thing I, i've got to do uh so look i can't do them every day also i wouldn't mind if you could include some other important stuff to help me strengthen my knowledge of the true true world we live in and that's from dominic uh, yeah dominic there are so many content providers out there don't look at me look at other people I mean, i'm like one speaker out of what 20 at the conference so all of them are excellent. In fact, some are way better than me, in my opinion. Let's see if there's any more I can, I gotta, gotta find something. Uh, slides, Mark, is it okay to post the slides on social media? Yes. This one's called The Edge. Uh, hi, Mark. Thanks. Thank you for your videos about Flat Earth and the history behind this original concept. I have lots of questions left, but one of them in particular on the Flat Earth model, the, the world is surrounded by ice. You can reach the edge in any direction. This is true. How is it possible for a small group of nations to protect the region against any explorer? What uh, what small group are you talking about? I, that means all of them benefit. From, yeah. All you have to do is create a multinational navy. That's it. I mean, we are talking about tens of thousands of kilometers to monitor. Yes, 
That is true. What do you think? The United States has military bases in all parts of the world. So if we can do that, all we have to do is just money, time. And what about the expeditions of Bird, the land he discovered? Thanks in advance. That's from a rend in the Netherlands. I'm not going to end on that one. I need something to end on. Something good. That's not going to be slides and survival guide. Hi, Mark. Please send me the 12 slides in your survival guide. Thanks, Jamie. Not going to end on that one. Flat Earth meetups in Kansas City. All right. We're going to end on this one. I swear to God, because I'm cutting it off in an hour. Hello, Mark. Love listening to your podcasts and interviews on radio broadcasts. I noticed a lot of your short videos are announcements about Flat Earth meetups in various cities. I'm not sure to look or search, but if you have any info about any FE meetups in the greater Kansas City area or surrounding suburbs, I would appreciate if you could do a short public service announcement video on your site to inform those interested. I and my wife would love to attend some of those meetups. We just don't know where to search to find them. Any help would be greatly appreciated. Thanks and keep it flat. That's from Kelly. Yeah, just go into Google and type in Flat Earth Meetup and then the city that's closest to you or the city that you want it to be in and people will find it. You, you will find them. They're out there. And I, yeah, I do make a lot of them. I mean, we have to start somewhere. Do we have a, uh, a meetup site? Currently, I don't think we've got an official one yet that's that's running. I just do what I can, and uh, you know. Also, you can put it on YouTube. Just just make your own YouTube channel, and if you make a video, I will mirror it. Just make a just a quick little video and say, look, we're gonna be at this restaurant or this bar or this hotel, and during this day and time, you gotta give it like at least a week notice, and send send me an email saying, hey, Mark, can you help us out? And it's like, yeah, of course, I'll throw it up on my channel for you and it really helps out a lot of people show up at these things all right that's it we're cutting it off we're done i'm not going to wait for some cool little email at the end uh but please keep sending me emails i will read them as long as i am able I'm not gonna be able to read them forever i know we've done 91 of these things uh, eventually it's, it's gonna get tough so email address of course is m sergeant 23 at comcast.net that's m s a r g e n t 23 at comcast.net until next time Stay flat.